Hello, and welcome back to the channel. So, it is a beautiful, rainy, dreary day in the Pacific Northwest. I have a lot on my plate this week, and I needed something that wouldn't take three days to film. So I've landed on something that I've actually been wanting to do, and some of you have expressed an interest in, but I've been wanting to do it for a while, and that is get back into making watercolor paints. So I've done this a couple of times before, and you saw this in my watercolor paint tour, so I thought it would make a really interesting video and kind of show you how I do that, and yeah, just have some fun with it. Now, all pigments in their dry form are dangerous to breathe in because they're like particles. So I'm going to be wearing a mask, absolutely going to be wearing a mask, but as for my hands, I'm just gonna roll up my sleeves and wash my hands real good afterwards because um, all the pigments I have are really safe uh, in terms of like toxicity. All right, so I have all of the supplies that I use to make watercolor paints uh, laid out in front of me, and I'm going to be showing you them now and explaining what each of them is and what it's for. We're gonna start with the most important two things that you are going to need. You're going to need a glass muller and a slab. Now this is a very thick um, pane of glass that I actually got from a free pile on the side of the road, and it was just a normal shiny piece of glass. And then I used the muller and this valve grinding compound, which is like, I think it's like diamond and like some sort of lubricant or something, like ground up diamond. It's so sparkly. It's so pretty. Grinding the slab is the most horrible noise. So wear like tight fitting earbuds or earplugs or something. It needs that texture, that little bit of grit. Um, otherwise it won't work. This is probably the most expensive bit of kit you're going to need, but it doesn't need to be ex as expensive as mine, because if you just want to make tiny quantities of paint, you can just get a smaller one. You're going to need a set of measuring spoons, uh, so that you can actually measure and keep track of the volumes of pigment to binder, because it's going to be different depending on the pigment you're using. Different pigments require different levels of binder, um, subtly different levels of binder. You're going to need something to put your paints in, and I just bought um, a bunch of watercolor pans. These are full pans, but I've also got half pans. And then, next thing you'll need is uh, yellow, or not, you don't need yellow iron oxide. You need pigment. So this is by Earth Pigments. They were the first pigments I bought ages ago. I've only worked with like two of the colors, I think. But yeah, I just got like a little beginner set of them, and um, yeah. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I've got to do is I've got to pick a color. And the colors I have, I don't have that many, but I have uh, ultramarine blue, I have yellow iron oxide, I have viridian, dark neutral brown, I will say, I've definitely used this one. It will oxidize on the slab, like it will start turning orange at the edges. Um, and I don't really like that. It, it's very unstable, this one, so might not use that one. We've got black iron oxide, so just black. And we have red iron oxide. And these are all of my like pigment pigments. But in addition to those, I also have uh, two, like, ancient bottles of mica pigments. Now, I've got a pearlescent copper, um, and there's not much left in it. You can see. It's, it doesn't have a whole lot in there. Or, I've got a pearlescent... Uh, white. And what I thought might be interesting, since I've got like a bunch of fairly boring colors, I thought it might be interesting to mix a couple of colors. Maybe ultramarine blue and copper would look really cool. Or if I wanted to play it safe, I could do the red and the copper because those are about the same color and I could get like a very subtly 
shimmery paint and that might be cool. And then one thing I wanted to mention, because I forgot to mention these two things, um, underneath the slab is like a drawer insert to stop things from sliding around. Another thing that I use is um, this notebook. So what you do is you swatch your mixture of pigment and binder, and you wait for it to dry, and then you rub it with your fingers, and if it doesn't come up on your fingers, there's enough binder. But if it dries and it's like really shiny, you've got way too much binder, and you need to add more pigment. So we're going to be working in here and on here. So, like I said before, each ratio of binder to pigment is going to be a little bit different depending on what pigment you're using. So, I'm going to use a ratio I've used in the past to start with, then I'll test it, see how it goes, and I've decided to go with the ultramarine blue and pearlescent copper. The last ratio I did was 4 tablespoons of pigment to 3 tablespoons of binder. I'm going to use 3 tablespoons of ultramarine and 1 tablespoon of pearlescent copper, because I really just want a tiny bit of copper shimmer, and we'll just, uh, we'll just see how it goes. And I might only make one color today, but, uh, who knows. Wow. That is just so blue. It's insane. Since we're measuring something dry, I've got a level, which I can use to... Make sure I've got the right amount. Two. Oh, this is going to be a lot of pigment. And then we need a tablespoon of this. And I'm just going to scoop it into here using a smaller spoon. So I've got like a half teaspoon. Because I don't want to get any ultramarine in here, but I also don't want to clean the spoon off. Oh, there some goes. Oh, that's so pretty together though. I really hope it looks as pretty next together as it does next to each other. Because if so, that'll be so nice. And I'm not trying to pack it down, I'm just trying to gently scoot it around so I've got like approximately a measurement. There we go, you can see that. Oh, it's so pretty together. What you do is you make a little hole in the middle of the pigment so that the binder doesn't spill out all over your table. A little bit at a time makes it easier. And this first bit you mix in with the paint knife. Because um, ultramarine is such a... it's such a red blue, it wants to be purple really bad. A lot of the time when you add an orange to it, so long as it's not too yellow, if you add a, like a reddish orange, it will just turn purple. Like a, a pretty but muted purple. So Either we're going to get like a, a muted ultramarine with tiny flecks of copper, or we're going to get a muted purple that's a little bit shimmery. Now either one of those is awesome, so no complaints. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm like I've just jogged up some stairs or something. It is not the easiest thing to breathe in this mask. But I don't want to die. So honestly, this is really watery. And I might just mull it like this. Because I think it might be easier and I can test it. And if it's good, then we're good. And if it's not, uh, I'll just add more. You start, you put down the muller. And you work in circular and kind of figure eight motions. And every once in a while you stop and you scrape it off with the palette knife. Oh my god. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get a purple. Wow, <laughs> that's really pretty. You push down, you don't need a lot of force. What you need force for is lifting it up because it will vacuum seal itself down to the mixture. And that can take a lot of force to release. <sighs> yeah, that. Um, and then you can see it's getting, you know, more towards the edge. And that's when you stop. And you, uh, scrape it in towards the middle. And 
You especially want to scrape on the sides because it can build up on these edges. But any paint on those edges, any clumps of pigment have a chance of not uh, getting ground in almost at all. And I say you don't need to apply a lot of force, and like, you don't need to apply a lot of downward force. But, uh, this can be really thick. And it can give you a bit of an arm workout. Alright, so I know it says, uh, 4 tablespoon pigment, 3 tablespoons binder, but this is actually 4 tablespoons of pigment and 2 tablespoons of binder because I wanted to try that out first. Gonna get a little bit of paint, and oh wow, that's <laughs> that's a very pretty color. I don't know how well the camera is picking that up. It looks okay, but I'm not cert. I'm not sure. But that is so pretty in real life. And I'm gonna get some like really watered down and try that, just to see. This will probably granulate really beautifully. Wow. Yeah, I can see that used on like stormy skies, maybe, or something like that. Just that really complicated bluey purple color. I love colors that uh, granulate a lot and separate from each other, which is what I was hoping would happen with this paint, and it really looks like that might be the case. But we will let this dry, and then we will um, give it a little smudgy smudgy test. Okay, so I tried it with two tablespoons of binder, and now that it's dried, it is coming up on my finger a little bit. So I'm gonna add that third one, uh, and then we'll try it again. But, uh, oh my god. Let me just... it's so pretty. This is it actually with uh, three tablespoons of binder and not coming up on my fingers at all, but it's also not, uh, I mean, it's shiny because of the mica, but it doesn't look, um, the finish isn't glossy or anything, which would be too much binder. So the four tablespoons pigment, three tablespoons binder was actually perfect. And now it's time to uh, start putting the paint into some pans and um, a little jar for the extra. So I'm gonna get started on that. I just find it really fascinating how when you look at this color on paper, watered down, it's blue with sparkles, but when you look at it in mass tone or as just the paint, not the paint on paper, it's purple. There's something so magical about that. So that is, uh, that's the video. I really hope you enjoyed diving back into making watercolor paints with me. It's been years, actually. It's been like four years since I got all this stuff and I first, you know, started experimenting and learning how to make watercolor paints and gaining a deeper understanding of how watercolor paints are made and how they work. I really hope you enjoyed this video and seeing, like, how I do this. It's very slapdash, I'm gonna be honest. I hope you don't mind that this wasn't really a tutorial on how to make paints, more so 
an overview so that if you were curious, it felt more approachable because that's what I want to do. I, do, I don't really want to teach, I just want to ungatekeep knowledge, if that makes sense. So this is essentially how you make watercolor paints by hand. Yeah, I went off on a, a hell of a tangent. I've got a mess to clean up. If you liked this video, if you liked seeing me make watercolor paints and experiment with mixing pigments, please let me know. Leave a saucy little comment in the comment section because I enjoyed it, and if you enjoyed it and I enjoyed it, I want to make more of these. I really hope I'll see you next time. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, leave a comment below letting me know you liked it so I know to make more of these in the future. A saucy, saucy little comment letting me know. And I will see you next time. Bye.